Chris, in trying to understand how the brain works, addiction is a very powerful tool. Two directions. One, what does addiction tell us about the way the normal brain functions? And how can we understand the process of addiction so that we can better help people in that process? So let's talk about the biology of addiction. Addiction is one of the most interesting stories, I think, in, in neuroscience as, 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 as it evolved. It's, it really started with uh, Jim Oltz at UCLA. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, he was at UCLA in, 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 in the 50s. And his experiments were with rats, and he was doing stimulation in, in certain areas of the brain. And he noticed that um, when he stimulated certain areas, the rats really liked it. They kept on coming back to the area where they were stimulated. So he, he, he developed this um, uh, self-stimulation paradigm where he had a lever in, in the cage and he would um, implant electrodes into the brain, into certain areas of the brain, the septum and areas which are actually close to the dopaminergic pathways, which I'll talk about a little later, I think. Um, and every time the, the, the rat hit the lever, they would get a stimulation in this area of the brain. And they would be, they would be pumping this lever like 2,000 times an hour. Mm -hmm. They were completely dependent. You know, they, they really wanted to press this lever. They'd do anything to press this lever. They'd go across electrical, know, grids. electrical grids and they'd, they'd leave their, their the, the female mothers would leave their children uh, and, the, and the males would leave the females in heat. Yes, you've got it. <laughs> they, they'd do anything to get this stimulation. Right. And when I tell people that, I, I, I think it, it, it drums home that there are some areas in the brain which if you stimulate, you don't do anything to get stimulation there. And drugs can do the same thing. They, they, they stimulate those same areas. And what Jim Olds did is he went back and he, he, he blocked certain pathways in the brain which have the neurotransmitter dopamine. Okay. Dopamine it seems has a key role in, in, in the reward system. We know that almost every drug of abuse stimulates the release of dopamine or increases dopamine in the, in the synapse. Mm -hmm. And this seems to be just one of the common, common uh, neurotransmitters, which is you know, one of the common features of all drugs of abuse. So the increase in dopamine um, some of the drugs we, we know work directly on the dopamine system, cocaine and amphetamine. So what cocaine does is it increases the, the dopamine in the synapse by blocking the reuptake of, okay. of, dopa of dopamine. So it just remains there and keeps it, its function over and over again. Yeah. So, and we know cocaine is a very addictive drug. Amphetamine does this, uh, it works in a slightly different way. It also increases the dopamine in the synapse, but it causes a release of, of, of dopamine from the dopaminergic neurons. Now, where are these neurons in the brain? Okay, these, these neurons, uh, the, the cell bodies are, are, are in the, the midbrain portion of, of the brain, and they spread throughout the whole, more or less the whole brain. They go through to the cortex, and they go to a very important area for reward, Called, called the nucleus accumbens. And this area is in the striatum. And this is, the, the, the striatum seems to be a, a key structure in... Um, Which in, is, in the, the striatum is, define where that is. The striatum is sort of below the cortex in the frontal right. half of the brain. And it contains much of the circuits which we, we associate with, with reward. Now, every drug we know causes release of dopamine in the in the in this circuit. Okay, got it. So opiates, nicotine, alcohol, cannabinoids, mm -hmm. they all work marijuana. By, yeah, yeah. Marijuana. They all work by increasing dopamine release. Now can can we generalize beyond that to other kinds of addictions uh, besides the ones that are purely drugs, like the process addictions like uh, gambling or overeating or other kinds of uncontrollably behaviors that, that people would have. The circuitry is a, a little different, but um, still dopamine is involved. Okay. 
So um, dopamine release will it, it will will occur with food rewards as well. Okay. Um, the way I think of dopamine, um, I mean, dopamine release also occurs with with pain. Um, it really is a way of telling the brain to take note. Mm. There's something going on which is really important. Mm. So dopamine is, is, is not just released with, with, um, with drugs of abuse, but it's also released with pain. It basically tells the brain to, to take note. There's something very, very important going okay. on. That's, that's how we see it. Okay, so now that we understand that's how the addiction is occurring, obviously that's a system that's in place. It's in place through evolution, and evolution didn't know about heroin. You're right. So how come it works? Why is the system that developed from evolution so susceptible to these, these kinds of, uh, of drugs or addictive behaviors? Well, I, th I think there's two parts of your question. Obviously, the, the, the brain didn't, didn't um, develop to respond to heroin, and there's clearly um, substances in the brain which, which mimic the, the effects of heroin. These are called endorphins and encephalins. Mm -hmm. This is the endogenous opioid system. Um, and with, with cannabinoids, the, you know, obviously marijuana, the, yeah. the brain wasn't developed, you know, didn't evolve to, to work with uh, marijuana. And there's endogenous cannabinoids, mm -hmm. um, which, which are, are a very lipid like molecules. Well, so we have these with things in our brain that are similar. Uh, yeah. Endorphins, uh, cannabinoids, different. Now, why are they there? What are they doing normally? Well, normally they're they're regulating our our, our reward functions because we so need that to function. We, we, we need these. They're they're they're, they're important have, for our drive. Yeah, I mean, without right. without without these um, with it, with it, without this reward system, we, we we'd be kind of lost. We'd be dithering around, right. not we, knowing what we, we want. We need. We wouldn't reproduce. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. Wouldn't have and any fun. No, it's 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 an incredibly important system. Right. It's it's part of our motivation, part of our drive, uh, you know, our, our drive to live. Okay. And um, when when there, there, there's been a number of experiments where they've actually tried to stop addiction by um, suppressing this reward system. So um, there's there, there's there's a drug which was used to block cannabinoid receptors. The, the receptors which bind to marijuana, the active ingredient of, of marijuana. And this drug is uh, suicidal. Mm. You know, that, that, that was why it was never put on the market, wow. because wow. It, it, it depressed these, this, this reward system to an extent. Where that people just didn't want to live anymore without those rewards. Yeah. It's, yeah. The, 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 and, and I think one of the problems with drug abuse is, and, and um, we, we haven't really talked about this, but I think the important thing about dr drug abuse is not only the fact that you, t you take the drug, but when you take the drug a lot, a lot, you have adaptations in the brain, which then counteract the effects. It, it kind of, there's a homeostasis which occurs in, in, the, in the brain circuits. And then when you go off the drug, that's when you have the problems, okay. because you have the opposite effects than you get with the drug. So when we're talking about opiates, what do we have? We have um, the primary effects, which are you feel mellow, you, you have constipation, and um, you, you have analgesia. You have, it's a very good, they're very good painkillers. But when you go off the drug, you're very, very sensitive to pain, you have terrible diarrhea, and you feel agitated. So you have the opposite effects, which, mm. which and, 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 you know, really, these, the, 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 the understanding that the drugs of abuse have really given us keys to how the brain works. I mean, I, I can tell you that we would never have understood the endogenous opiate system if there wasn't opium sure. or a, sure. an morphine. We, we would never have known it was there. Mm. But it's so important to our existence because it creates this, this reward system which motivates us to do all, virtually all the, the, the essential things we do with life. That's right. That's right. Mm. And the, the key neurotransmitters, in, in, in my view, are dopamine, which is released on, on, uh, uh, with, with all, all of the um, drugs of abuse that we know of, and the opiate system, where the opiate system is activated with um, many of our drugs, including nicotine, alcohol, and, and cannabis. Mm. These are, the, this system is activated, and without this system, we lose the um, rewarding effects of those drugs.